guys welcome to the second lecture of machine learning series so today in this lecture we are taking it exactly from the part where we left in the last lecture which was linear regression in this lecture we are actually going to go and kind of study some more advanced techniques of linear regression per se so first up so before we kind of get into that let's first understand what we have covered to as of now introduction to your python obviously i'm guessing this is something that i have said in the last lecture as well this is something you need to be absolutely familiar with before you kind of proceed any further here right if you are not familiar don't 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 push further ahead you are going to have a lot of tough timing introduction to multi machine learning as such you have kind of done that i have seen that uh, basic probability deceptive and descriptive stats uh, so now you are kind of at peace with statistics i would say yes probably yes and uh, that's perfectly fine even if you are not absolutely 100% confident about it that's perfectly fine as well you don't need to be absolutely worried about it at this point in time uh, if we when we do classification lectures that's probably going to be something that is going to be critical but before that happens this is something that is uh, not going to bother you as much so and for this particular lecture even if you're not absolutely familiar with it you still have some time before the next lecture to kind of get familiar with basic probability and the final thing is uh, stop the, the num this different steps that are there to kind of solve a ml problem apart from this i'm sure you have also been familiar with the first part of machine learning which was linear regression right so you absolutely know what linear regression was where we use this cost function and this concept of gradient descent and all of that so now we are going to go a step ahead in machine learning in linear regression per se and understand some basic uh, basic advanced techniques for doing linear regression so first to do advanced techniques we need to first understand what are the shortcomings of linear regression then we need to understand this particular concept called polynomial basis function where we spend polynomial basis function a regularization bias variance trade off those are some of the topics that we are going to cover in the days lecture we are also going to cover something called validation so those are four or five topics that we are going to have for the day today so first uh, we have already learned so the story so far is that we have learned how to fit a model on the basis of sales price and the area of a house and we could predict a linear model we could build a linear model and predict the price of a house from that but uh, uh, then that's what we have learned as of now so now let's see what happens uh, right up so why was john unhappy with linear regression so he thought that if houses were having prices far away from the regression line are these outliers what happened when the model is exposed to outliers so john's concern clearly in this case has suddenly come from the fact that he is concerned about the fact that what happens in cases if your uh, if the data that you are trying to look at has got a lot of outliers right if if that's the case well, how how does how well does linear regression even f react to that so let's try and see that let's there's no other way to see that other than trying and experimenting by ourselves so we'll have learned what are outliers outliers are basically these points which are really not belonging to the normal distribution not as in the natural distribution not it could be normal it could be not normal any distribution the distribution of the data points as it is and there's one point which does not fit the end rest of the distribution of data points that's the outlier point so john was still confused on how could outlier could affect the parameters of a linear model so in order to understand that what do you do you first build a model without outliers and then you see how it works and then you kind of add an outlier and then again see how it works out and then you see what happened there right so that's what exactly we are going to do we are going to first create random data points and we are going to try and plot them as it is so this is a plot of random values of x there are random values of y we have tried keeping a linear relationship of sorts as you can see we have tried basically plotting across this line 2 into x minus 5 So we have done that two into x minus five, and we have added a random noise, right? So that's perfect, awesome. That's perfectly what we want to do. So two into x minus five is the line that we want the model to figure out, and based on that, we have added some random values of x and y, and then we fit a normal line, and then based on that, we see that yeah, that's working exactly what we thought to be. So the model coefficient actually comes out around two point zero three, and the coefficient is exactly minus five. So yeah, this line that the model has come up with is exactly similar to the line that we had, we would have expected it to come at, which is two x minus five. So now we go ahead and say that okay, uh, that's exactly what we have. So my our beta naught is minus five and two point three two point zero three is beta one, right? So the equation here is slightly bit 
wrong so it's basically this is the equation that we finally come up with y prediction equals to minus 5.00 plus 2.03 into x right so that is the that is the equation that we have so this is my beta naught and this is my beta one right so that's awesome so now let's introduce outliers and see what happens so to introduce outliers we added this random point which is 50 right you see here we basically changed the uh, we added a new point which is now uh, which has got now y value which is 50 uh, for the 20th x point right so for the 20th x point we basically suddenly changed that value whatever it was to a point now you can see in the plot that there's a sudden outlier that we have added there and now let's try and do the same thing that we have tried which is basically try and fit the best fit line so now as you can clearly see from the both the plots so now we have combined we just added not only added one outlier we combined two outliers and now what we see from the slides is that the outliers when we add them the line looks drastically different right so now john knows that what linear regression can can be a bit dicey towards outlier right because once once you add that outlier if you have the normal line then it would have a lot of deviation from the predictions right for the outlier points and in order to minimize that my straight line would move towards the outlier and then you kind of see that the line kind of varies a lot right so if you outliers if there are a lot of outliers in your data you would soon have a data which line which is absolutely all over the place right because your job of the uh, line is to kind of come up with a line which has a minimum difference between your target and predictions now if your target values are already all together off right in case of outliers in order to compensate for the large deviation it would move towards that outlier and in doing so it would basically cause your line to shift towards the outlier and then at the end of the day if you have a lot of outliers your line would basically be shifted a lot towards those outliers causing your data to be actually causing the line to be absolutely absolutely deviated from what it originally should be so that's something that's a problem with outliers so that's one model that we have one basic uh, problem with linear regression that we have figured out as of now so how do we remove outliers so the same thing that we have done as of now which is do eda uh, do all of those things right one q3 plus 1.5 times 1.75 times quartile difference and q1 minus the same into interquartile difference so the same techniques that you have done as of now all of those five standard six standard deviations above mode and all of those techniques that we have discussed as of today as of in this lecture series regarding eda and how we do outlier detection all of those techniques are value are absolutely uh, valid techniques to do outlier detection and once you do outlier detection you can remove those outliers and you can go ahead and fit the rest of the non-outlier version of the data into a linear straight line right so that is all linear regression is all about so outline if there's an outline in the data we know how to handle that right so that's something that we are familiar with and hence we know that but only thing to kind of draw from all of this is concept is basically the fact that if there's an outline in your data linear regression is definitely not robust to it so please 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 make sure that you remove your outliers before you kind of go ahead and fit your linear regression model right linear regression is definitely not robust to outline this is something we'll see in your uh in the next experiment in the next lecture as well on logistic regression so now we are going to the second part of the session welcome to this and what we are going to talk about in this particular session is something which is an another major flaw of linear regression which is how well does it kind of capture relationships when y is not linearly dependent on x so to do that same the same thing john is going to do the same thing once again he's going to take random values of y and random values of x and what the what he's going to do now is he's going to take y such that y is not linearly dependent on x by linearly i mean not in a straight line fashion right so y is not going to be in some form of uh, y is not anymore uh, beta naught plus beta one x, but y is basically now y equals to sine x, right? So that's the thing that we have. We are going to start off with. So we have y equals to sine x plus some random noise, so as to make it, uh, you know. It's just not all of the points don't lie on just a straight sine curve. So we have added small noise to make it look here and there. And that's about it. So now it is evident that a linear model will not be able to fit this data properly well. 
So, so that's something that you already know. If you try and fade a straight line through all of this, that's probably not gonna be uh, helpful. So, just directly trying to predict a straight line probably would not help. But let's try and do that any which ways, and let's see how that helps. So, in this case, as expected, the linear model is not performing. It's not doing a good. It's doing a very poor job of uh, explaining the target variable, right? Hence, fitting a linear line to such a non-linear data is not really helpful, right? In this case, as you can clearly see, that there's a lot of there's a lot of deviations. So this is a sine x curve, and your line is passing like this, right? So there's a lot of deviation that is happening because after this, the curve kind of goes on and on while your line kind of goes keeps on moving straight. So as I was explaining, so underfitting is this concept that when a model is failing to capture the overall trend of the data, right? So if you have simple model for not so simple data sets, right? So in this case, a model is said to have high bias. What is high bias? Bias, bias is basically the whole understanding of this concept. Bias is basically the fact that your model making a lot of error. The average expectation of your errors is what you measure as bias. And if you see a high bias, that probably means that there is a lot of error. And why does a lot of error would tend to happen is because, because probably you're trying to kind of make predictions which are simple enough and broadly you're kind of under you're neglecting the overall complexity of the data set right so if you're trying to do that you will come up with a model that is extremely simple and has got a high bias so what's the issue here so obviously there's a linear regression that he does uh, which is not able to fit right so what does he thinks about a non-linear regression and a polynomial so please keep in mind one thing that I would like to say in the last lecture I've also said this is not linear non-linear regression is not a term linear regression is still what you do what you're just gonna do here is you're gonna do polynomial regression right instead of using x so I'm gonna come to that right now so how does John tackle this technique uh, situation is basically he says that there's an underfitting that you see here so let's kind of understand what John is gonna try and do right now so John says that y equals to beta naught y prediction equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x right so this is something that he thinks is probably too simple right and what he's trying to estimate because in this case is y equals to sine x right this is the original function that he tries to mimic so he thinks that if you use a line like this that probably is not really helpful but he probably then says that probably instead of doing that you can do something like this right so instead of using x as just the one single independent feature you can use x square right or probably beta 3 into x cube right so something like this probably include more polynomial features so these are called polynomial features so this is your one independent feature which was area and this is area square and this is area cube right so basically the same feature but polynomial versions of the same right cube square cube and all of those things those are called these are called polynomial features and polynomial features are something that are helpful in case of linear regression if you think that your model is underfitting because you think this is too complex too simple a relationship and you think this probably might be a better relationship now why does he think this would be a better relationship so if you remember sine x and this is probably for all of you who have probably done your engineering degree you would know that sine of x if when x is very small we can be, you can kind of try and make sense out of it like this x plus x cubed by something something of this sort it, it can be basically sine x can be explained as a sum of different x functions right so a, a polynomial of x right so x square x plus x cubed by uh, factorial something of that so i forgot exactly what the expansion was but you can basically expand sine x into a polynomial function of x plus x square plus something plus x cube by something so on and so forth yeah x plus x cube plus x to the power five something of that this sort right so it was probably sine x was expanded as this so that is how sine x looks like when x is in a small range of x so given that is the case you can basically see that probably this then makes sense right because if x is around the near neighborhood of zero you can probably kind of try and say y prediction equals to this and even when y, x is not in the even when x is not in the region of zero you can probably include something like this right x cubed by 3 2 factorial whatever 
x5 and then you know as if you increase your number of degrees x to the power say 11 x to the power 13 obviously the more number of degrees the more accurate your precision is and this probably would work if the higher number of degrees that would probably even work when x is not small so that's the idea so if you have a lot of degrees in your polynomial features so that probably might be able to work out and give you a much better estimate than just this particular straight line right y equals to beta naught plus beta 1x so that's the understanding that sin x can be expanded as a polynomial function of x and hence probably it makes sense to have polynomial features of x also as features now please remember this fact that because you're doing x and x squared and x cubed that doesn't make it non-linear regression it's still linear regression because you are basically linear regression is linear in terms of the parameters right the parameters are beta naught beta one beta two all those all of those things are parameters and because those are param it's linear in terms of those parameters it's still a linear regression right so don't don't go don't kind of fall into that trap that because we are using polynomial features and we are probably going to try and plot a sine curve or a, which is a non uh, which is uh, which is not a straight line curve right so because we are just trying to plot a non straight line curve that doesn't make it non linear regression it's still linear regression because it's linear in terms of parameters so now polynomial basis function so polynomial basis function is basically uh, the same thing right so now as i've already explained to you polynomial basis function is this whole function right y equals to beta naught plus beta 1x plus beta 2x square and beta n right if you are trying to do nth degree polynomial that is beta n all the way summation all the way up till beta n into x to the power n so polynomial projection is already built if as part of scikit so you don't have to worry much about it so if you want to do so there's nothing but uh, there is this particular transformation called polynomial feature transformation where you have to say the number of degrees still which you want to transform your features so if you say two degrees it would basically take x and x square if you say three degrees it would say x x square and x cube and so on and so forth right so let's now try and understand this so first from pre-processing you say polynomial features then you take that this is your normal array the x array right x equals to two three four now you say polynomial is polynomial features and you say i want all the x values still three degrees right so i have x if you give me x and i want x square and as well as x cube so now you do poly dot fit transform x and then you see that it gives you x x cube and x x square and x cube right so that's the point of polynomial features it basically takes your x values and it transforms into the degrees you want it to be right so this was your data frame originally so this was your original data frame x and then y and you think that x just using x is probably not helpful right so then what you do using polynomial feature is you kind of transform this into x x square x cube and these are now all independent features right and then these are this is y right so this is something that you use and based on this this is a polynomial basis function and based on this you try and predict right so here three the polynomial feature says that is basically the value of the degree of polynomials up to which we want our data to be transformed right so we can see three values of two three and four for example four 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 one square and four cube right so for each value we basically got for each x in this x column in this column we basically got the corresponding square and the cube values right so that's what we have done so we have now constructed a polynomial degree function so now john decides to use the same technique uh, to create a seven degree polynomial right so x x1 square x cube all the way to x to the power seven and he will try and use that to see if he can using that function can he come up to a better estimation of y right so earlier we saw that his y equals to sin x model was not working uh, was the one that he wanted to predict but using y equals to beta naught plus beta one x was not working as well so now he says that okay let me do something more i'm going to take y equals to beta naught plus beta one x one beta one x plus beta one x beta two x square plus beta three x cube so on so forth till beta seven x to the power seven and then try and see if i can come up with a better polynomial estimate better sinusoidal ex uh, sinusoidal estimation so that's what he exactly does and he currently tries and plot that and you see that hey that works perfectly fine right if you try and use that and then you try doing this and you can see that hey that actually works perfectly fine right 
doing that again you can see he's clearly fitted a good amount of data right so the um, the underfitting kind of issue is solved right because now you're able to fit a line that kind of that kind of goes through all the data points and the error is definitely low right so the bias issue has been solved so there are obviously many range, many different advantages of using a polynomial regression such as broad range of functions can be fit under the model polynomial can fit a wide range of curvature right so if you have a if your y is not exactly in a straight line for, uh, format a straight line li linear relationship with x then you can basically change uh, then you can basically have a higher degree polynomial represent that relationship and that's that's awesome right because you don't now need y and x to be straight line lead dependent right uh, so that's that's awesome right because you can now represent quadrilateral you can basically represent uh, poly uh. so now we see that this is working perfectly fine right seventh order polynomial and we have curve which absolutely fits uh, to the t right so it is passing through all the points the error is minimum so there are definitely advantage advantages to using a polynomial regression right so because now you can basically uh, fit in a lot more different kinds of functions right earlier we were while we in the last lecture we were kind of limited to fitting a straight line right we were th thinking that that's probably everything to the world right in linear regression that's not absolutely the point you can fit any kind of linear uh, non-linear relationship right between y and x you can still fit that using linear regression keep in mind linear regression is about the linearity in parameters not in variables right so even if your variables are non-linearly related you can use linear regression using polynomial features you can basically create those uh, features which are x square x cube and other non-linear features and use all of those features together and linear regression to come up with a non-linear representation of y and x right so non-linear relationship between variables can still be captured by linear uh, regression if you use polynomial features right so that's awesome so now let's obviously john is like okay that sounds perfectly fine you know what seven degree is awesome let me do it till 18th degree probably i'll be able to approximate it even better right probably it would pass through all the points and he's almost correct right that probably 18th degree and you see that there's there's something that is happening here but it, it seems like working even more well right because you can see that it's passing through all the points absolutely correctly remember that what we did was we took a y equals to sine x curve and we kind of put some random noise on top of that right so now you start seeing that this is this particular curve is actually fitting to those noise data points as well right so it's, it's trying to account for that noise as well. it's trying to learn the noise as well which is something that we are not absolutely happy with uh, but then uh, John is even more greedy and now he thinks you know what let me go for an even higher degree polynomial and in this case something spectacular has happened right so in this case the the curve is basically passing through all the data points in this example right so there are probably around 20 odd data points and the line that we have fitted is passing through all those 20 data points exactly so what it has done is basically it has learned to kind of fit to the noise as well right so we had added this noise on top of y equals to sin x and this curve has basically learned to fit to that noise which is something which is slightly bad right i, I, I don't know probably not sounds sounds doesn't right right at all uh, it should have actually learned the straight simple linear relationship curve the, the sorry not linear the sin x curve right that's what it should have learned why did it in the pick up this whole weird kind of a curve right in this place so what's going on so here see the model is learning too much from the data right it's learning even those small noises that we have added it's learning to fit to those as well so not only is it learning legit data but it's also learning the noise which is wrong right so such a model is now called to be overfitting now this is completely on the other end of underfitting underfitting was when we had a very simple model you are not learning anything at all right so there, there was nothing in it and you had a very high bias in this particular case there's something wrong happened in this case the bias is extremely low right for training data you can see the bias is extremely low because you're kind of fitting every noise perfectly but there's something wrong happening here it's basically some of memorizing those data points right that is what is exactly happening log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates